Hi friends, in this tutorial series we'll be implementing Spring Boot and Spring Batch examples. In previous tutorial we looked at what is Spring Batch. In this tutorial we'll be looking at the Spring Batch architecture in detail. For this I'll be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So go to Spring, Spring Batch. The example that we'll be implementing today is Spring Batch architecture. In this tutorial we'll be understanding the Spring Batch architecture. Following are the main building blocks of Spring Batch. Job, Job Instance, Job Execution, Job Launcher and Job Repository. Let us begin by understanding what is a job in Spring Batch. So a Spring Batch job it can be defined as the work to be executed using Spring Batch. This work it might involve simple or complex tasks. In case of simple tasks usually a Spring Batch tasklet is used. For example for a task like deleting a file or executing a database query, a Spring Batch tasklet will be implemented to execute the job. In the next tutorial, we'll implement a simple Spring Batch Tasklet Hello World example to delete a file at a particular location. Suppose a Spring Batch job to be executed, it involves multiple steps that can be executed in a sequence. For example, a job consisting of reading from a database, processing it and writing the output to a particular location. In case of such complex tasks, Spring Batch chunk is used to complete the job. In the next tutorial, we'll be implementing the Spring Batch Chunk Processing Hello World example. Chunk based processing provides advantages like parallel processing, less network load etc. So you can go through this example here. Next we'll be having a look at the Spring Batch job instance. So when a Spring Batch job is run, a job instance gets created. A job instance is a logical run of the job. Each job instance is identified by job name and the parameters passed to the job. For example, if we schedule a job to be run every day, then a new job instance will be created for every run each day. So we'll be having a job. Suppose this job is to read, process and write files daily. Then daily for each run a new job instance will be created. Next we'll be having a look at Spring Batch job execution. So each job instance it is considered to be complete when it has an attempt or job execution that has successfully completed. Again consider Spring Batch job whose job is to read, process and write files daily. Now for this particular Spring Batch job every day a new job instance will get created. When this job instance it gets executed a job execution is created. Now one job execution every day if the execution is successfully completed. So suppose if this job execution it fails then the same day another execution might be tried. So each day we can have multiple job executions depending upon the status of this job execution. So when the actual job instance it executes or it runs we have a job execution which should get completed successfully for this job to be completed. Spring Batch job execution can have one of the following status. Abandoned, Completed, Failed, Started, Starting, Stopped, Stopping, Unknown. So these states they are stored in the database which we'll be having a look at later. Next we'll have a look at the Spring Batch Job Launcher. Spring Batch Job Launcher is an interface used to launch Spring Batch Jobs. The Spring Batch Job Launcher has a single method run which takes two parameters, Job and Job Parameters. So Job is the job to be executed and Job Parameters are the parameters which are passed to this particular job. So previously we have seen a Spring Batch job to read, process and write files. In order to start or launch this job, we make use of the Spring Batch job launcher. So it is provided by Spring Batch framework to launch a job. And also to this job we can pass parameters. So for example, suppose we need to read uh, the files from a particular location and also write the files to a particular location and this location it changes. Then this input location and output location they can be passed as job parameters to this particular job. Finally, we have a look at the Spring Batch job repository. So we have seen previously that one of the important features of Spring Batch is state management. This is achieved using job repository. Suppose a Spring Batch job was running and an error occurs. How does Spring Batch know that an error has occurred and the job it needs to be rerun? Important aspect of Spring Batch is that there should be no external interference. So if an error occurs, we should not manually try to run the Spring Batch job again. This should be done automatically. So we need to save the state of the job and future executions should take this into consideration. State management it is an important aspect when processing large volumes of data and this is achieved using Spring Batch repository. So all the job metadata related to the job run is stored in the Spring Batch job repository. Spring Batch repository it provides two different types of data stores. The first is in-memory job repository. When developing a Spring Batch job or running unit tests, configuring an external database may be more trouble than it's worth. Because of that Spring Batch it provides an implementation of job repository that makes use of the Java util map instances as the data store. Usually this is not used in prod environment. The other job repository is the relational databases. A relational database is the default option for job repository in Spring Batch. 
the spring batch metadata is persisted using relational tables so this relational database it can be any database like h2 database or mysql database where some relational tables they are created and the metadata is stored in them so these are the tables that get created for spring batch for storing the metadata in the next tutorials we'll be having look at uh, these tables when we'll be running the job and looking at how these tables they store the metadata for the job